Hey guys, welcome to another video and welcome to the 20 films audiences got wrong. <clears throat> yes, in the last video I did 20 films critics got wrong, so I thought I'd do the 20 films audiences got wrong. This one is going to be a little, you know, easier to do because there's a lot of like cult films that a lot of, a lot of audiences enjoy and stuff and luckily the audiences aren't as... I guess harsh as critics because there's some movies on like Rotten Tomatoes or like IMDb that are very sometimes too high or too low and stuff so th when it comes to the audiences it doesn't get too crazy but I still think they're all wrong in my personal opinion obviously so yeah some of these films are just films audiences got wrong some of them I think the audiences were too harsh on and some of these films I think the audiences were too nice on i'm gonna start with uh the films that audiences were too nice with and then i'm gonna go to the ones that were too harsh on so let's get to it 20 films i personally think audiences got wrong first one is the bench warmers this is a film that the audiences quite enjoy like it's much higher on the audience score on Rotten tomatoes than it is the critic score and most people even friends i know love this movie they think it is funny it's a happy madison movie people find enjoyable they love the baseball and they love john heater and rob schneider and david spade's performances i will fully admit i was a fan of it when it came out i i think it was about maybe 13 when it came out so i loved a lot of stupid movies and i, I thought it was enjoyable i had the dvd i thought it was funny as time goes by, I don't like the movie. I just don't find it funny. I find it just, it's a little too juvenile. And I like some immature, stupid, juvenile films. Like, I, I, I like, and I even like some of the shitty, some shitty Adam Sandler films. Like, I sometimes laugh at some Billy Madison. Even though I think Billy Madison is a shit movie, there are things that make me laugh in that fucking movie. Uh, and I like, like Big Daddy and stuff. Well, bench warmers, I'm, just, I'm not a fan of. I know there's a fan base for it, but personally, I don't agree with it. Uh, next is Courageous. Courageous is a very courageous story. <laughs> um, films like this, I would sometimes mostly agree with the audiences. Like, like uh, I think maybe critics can get a little harsh on stories like this. But for once, I actually agree with the critics on this one. I don't think it's very enjoyable. I thought it was kind of boring, and I didn't think any of the performances were all that strong. I think they should have got some more talented people. I think it was a little over overly sappy and preachy, and I just, I, don't know, I just couldn't get into this story. And I know there's a lot of great stories, whether it's about firemen or uh, ambulance drivers or police officers. There are a lot of films about these kind of things, and people... Saving people's lives just uh, could have done been done better. Yeah, Storm of Greece could have been done better. And yeah, just I don't know I, I can see why people like it, but I don't agree with it. Next is a big one. People love this movie, and I was never on board with it. My brother loves this movie, and that is Super Troopers. Super Troopers is a film my brother fucking loves. Well, he's a police officer. A lot of police officers really enjoy the film. Don't like it. Don't like it. I know there's a big fan base for it, this audience fan base. Not, not, not my thing. It's not my kind of humor. Even when Super Troopers Two came out, I didn't like it. I'm, this is just not my shtick. Um, I know it's like a bunch of cops who are stupid and all they do is fuck with people all the time. That could be funny. It really could. But if the writing was a little better, some of the characters were a little more enjoyable, maybe a little more likable or fleshed out, I think the film could have worked. But it's not my thing. It's not my shtick. And again, comedy is subjective. Like, it just, if it makes you laugh, it makes you laugh. And this movie makes people laugh, but it doesn't make me laugh, so not my thing. Another one is 90s nostalgia. Any 90s kid will always say this movie's great, but I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not with it. And that is The Little Rascals. I found, I did watch this as a kid. I'm a 90s kid, so of course I watched this. I had the VHS tape of it. Uh, I always thought it was fine when I was a kid. I never, like, loved it. But everyone in my family watched that. My sister and my brother watched it. And it was always, like, on the television. So I watched it. It's not a good movie, though. It's not. Like, I never watched the classic television show. But this movie is not very good. It's not very funny. It doesn't have good characters. I don't know what the hell's happening half the time. It's just, I don't know. I just, 
it's a movie for kids, especially kids of the 90s. It has that 90s cheese and stuff. And I feel like if you're a 90s kid, you're going to love the Little Rascals. And you're just like, I grew up with this. <laughs> but uh, it's not good. It's a nostalgia bait movie. And again, some movies of nostalgia I love. Like, I love The Mighty Ducks. Sheer nostalgia. Just, again, it's all subjective. Just, I don't think this film holds up, though. Another one is a musical called Newsies. Not a Newsies fan. Not a fan of this one. Uh, I know there's some people who are huge Die Hard fans. Die Hard of this movie. Of the Broadway show. Like, they love it. They buy the, the albums of it. They go on, like, every time, like, the Newsy, Newsy Broadway shows on tour. Like, people go see this. Like, there's some Die Hard Newsy fans out there. I, I'm not one of them. Uh, I've only seen the movie. And I don't like the movie. So, I uh, can't say I'm a fan. I know Christian Bale's in it. But that's, that, that's beside the point. Uh... I just, I'm not a fan of these musical numbers. I'm not a fan of the story. I'm just, I'm not a fan of these characters. I just don't get invested in this. And again, I like musicals a lot. And even really corny ones like Moulin Rouge and shit like that. But, yeah, it's not this one. Uh, next is another one that has a pretty big fan base. Joe Dirt. Another David's paid comedy. Uh, Joe Dirt is stupid for me. Like, I just don't like it. I, I remember a lot of my friends, even some of my buddies now, they quote Joe Dirt. And I'm like, what the fuck are you quoting? Like, it's Joe Dirt. I'm like, oh, the stupid redneck David Spade movie? You like that? Uh, okay. Teach his own, I guess. But uh, I've only seen this movie, like, once or twice. Uh, and I just never liked it. I never liked it. I just never thought it was funny or enjoyable. And I know people quote it and people love it. And they're just like, oh, it's such, it's stupid, but that's what makes it funny. And I get it. Like, I get it. I have movies like that too. Movies that are so dumb, that, but they're fucking hilarious and amazing. Again, I like Bloodsport. <laughs> uh, but it's not this. Just not my thing. Just not my thing. Uh, another one is a dancing movie, and I, I guess there's a huge fan base for this whole franchise, but I'm just going to talk about the first one, that is Step Up. Step Up is a very liked film by a lot of people. Um, it's not good. <laughs> I've seen all the Step Up movies, too. I've watched all of them. And no, I'm not going to do a ranking of them, because they're all terrible. This one is obviously the best by default, but I just don't... It's not enjoyable. I, I, I'm not always... a big dance movie kind of guy. There's some I like. I like uh, Dirty Dancing. <laughs> uh, I like, uh, what's that one? Billy Elliot. Like, those are pretty good dancing movies, but, like, for the most part, I'm not, like, a dancing movie kind of person. This one is about hip-hop dancing, like, contemporary dancing, and a guy from, like, the streets, and he goes and volunteer. Well, he has to do community service at this, like, rich art school, and then he meets a girl, falls in love, and they have to do this, like, routine and everything. Like, I don't know. Just, it's a story that's been done a million times, and maybe if they had, like, better actors in it. It's funny, Jane, Jane and Jenna Dewin, they're, they're, like, married and stuff, and they're supposed to have real chemistry, but I, I sensed none of that in the movie, and uh, I don't know. I, just, I didn't find it an inspirational story or even an enjoyable story. Uh, even when it came out, I actually quite enjoyed it. I had the DVD of it, but just, as time went by, uh, I just realized it's not that good. So, yeah, not a Step Up fan. Another one is a, is a comedy that people really enjoy, and that's uh, Van Wilder. Uh, especially Die Hard Ryan, Ryan Reynolds fans. Uh, not a Van Wilder fan. The sequel's even worse, but everyone knows the sequel sucks. But Van Wilder's... It's this raunchy, nasty comedy. It, it, again, it's another, like, American Pie and stuff like that. It, it tries to be this, like, raunchy teen, gross-out movie. And it, it tries to be it tries to be even more grosser than American Pie. And grosser than, like, there's something about Mary and stuff. Uh, American Pie is not a franchise I like very much. But at least I could say there's one or two films that are okay. And I can actually understand the fan base for American Pie. And I'm not an American Pie. I'm not an American Pie fan. But I understand people liking those movies. The, the Van Wilder one is a little more hard to comprehend why people like them. Uh, I think Van Wilder is a, a douchebag of a character. I hate Ryan, Ryan Reynolds' performance in the movie. If Tara Reid... Uh, you got uh, Cal Penn <laughs> in the movie. They're all dreadful in the film. And it's not funny. And when it tries to do the gross out, it's not funny either. It's literally just gross. And yes, not a Van Wilder fan. 
Another movie I find obnoxious, but there's a fan base for this. So annoying, though. And that is A Night at the Roxbury. Oh, my God. So, anyways. You guys want to make out or what? <laughs> people find this shit funny. I don't know. Just, I know a lot of people, even my best friend, loves this movie. I fucking can't stand this movie. And I know Will Ferrell and Chris Kattan can be very funny guys. They don't show any of their comedy in this movie. This movie is fucking annoying. It's literally just about two guys who think they're cool and think they're ladies, man, and they're not. They're a bunch of fucking idiots. And they just stumble upon all this great stuff that happens to them. It, like, it, it's just the most idiotic film. The, that's the point of the movie, is just these two idiots who can't pick up chicks start picking up chicks. And I don't know. I, I, I don't like it. And it does the little headbanging thing people like to do, though. <laughs> Hate it. Just, it's, it's one of the most annoying films ever. And when people say they like it, I'm like, ugh. I get it, teaches own, but oh god, that movie's so obnoxious. All right, now I'm getting to the section of audiences were a little. No, wait, hold on, sorry, sorry, no, 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 no. One more, one more movie. Beaches, beaches, beaches is not good. My mom, my sister loved this movie, uh, and I know it was a huge hit in the '90s when it came out. Uh, like it really made Bette Midler even more famous than she already was. It's not good. It's just this sappy, formulaic cancer movie that doesn't work. Want to watch a good cancer movie? Watch uh, Terms of Endearment. Good movie. All right, now we're getting to the part of audiences were a little more harsher on and critics are more nicer to, and I agree more on the critic side than the audience side. Uh, nah, first up is The Vast of Night. I fucking love this movie. Uh, I don't think audiences hated it, but they certainly didn't maybe understand it or understand why it was this good. I fucking love it. I think it's great. Uh, I think it's superbly well written. I love the pacing. I love that it's about like UFOs and trying to track down the, the UFOs and what's going on in this town and everything. It's a lot about sounds and radio frequencies. I thought it was a fantastic film. And for the 94 minutes, I was enthralled by it. And I think it's fantastic. Uh, another one is Ants. Uh, I guess people are just more A Bug's Life fans than Ants. I, I can't stand A Bug's Life. I think that's an overrated Pixar film. Ants I enjoy. I don't think Ants is like a masterpiece or anything, but I do think it's very good. I think it's a good movie. I, I like the characters. I like the designs more. I like that it kind of shows more of a realistic, you know, it's a cartoon, more realistic, uh... Uh, embodiments of the creatures and the ants and stuff and the worlds are cool the villains cool and i love how they got all these big actors in it too and just i think it's good i think people hate on it because they like a bug's life more which is whatever next is a horror film that critics love audience hated that's the witch i like the witch i actually think it's good i think it's a very good movie i think anya taylor joy is very good in the film uh films like this i'm not always into i'm not always into these kind of things uh uh, I think it's good, though. I, I, I think it's very intense. It has great atmosphere. The music is incredible. Uh, the ending is unsettling, and I, I enjoyed it. It's not a film I would really watch a lot. I don't think I've seen it since I saw it in theaters back in, like, 2016, but I still remember everything about it. It still sticks with me, and I still can say that, yeah, it's a good movie. Uh, next is Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I did a whole video about this. Uh, audiences hate it because some of those Indiana Jones fanboys, they fucking can't stand it. I get it. I get it. Like, if this is not for you, you think it ends at Last Crusade, I get it. I like it, though. I, I like Kingdom of, the, uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I think it's underrated. I like Harrison Ford in it. I like Marion. I even like Shia LaBeouf in the film. Uh, Kate Blanchett was in There was some cool action sequences. There's some dumb stuff. It's definitely the weakest Indiana Jones movie, but I still enjoy it. And no, I, I, I'm not excited for Indiana Jones 5. I don't want any more Indiana Jones. It's fuck. Harrison Ford's too old. But I like King of Crystal Skull. Yeah. Sue me, I know. Another one is uh, The Crucible. I think even critics are not even... 
I think the audiences are like 66, and this is like, the critics are 69. I think this movie's fantastic. I think the, the ratings for both should be much higher, I think, maybe both critics. I, I want more audiences because they're a little more negative on it, but I think both are wrong. I think this movie should be in the 80s and maybe low 90s. This movie is really fucking good. I think Daniel Day-Lewis and one other writer are great. I think the writing is top-notch. Um, I'm a little uh, biased on this because... I was in this play, like, I, when I was in high school, I actually got to be in The Crucible, the play. And my high school had it, and I was one of the roles in it. So, I have a sheer biasy for the story of The Crucible. I like the book, and I like the plays and stuff. So, sheer biases, but I still love this movie. I still think the film itself is fantastic. It's my name! <laughs> love it. Dan Taylor Dillis is great in the film. Next is Courage Under Fire. Nobody talks about this movie. I don't know why. Like, no one talks about it. Audiences never talk about it. And when they talk about it, like, oh, yeah, that, like, kind of forgettable war film. Like, no. It's not a forgettable war, war film. It's a fucking amazing war, war film. Uh, it's a great movie about, like, Denzel Washington is this soldier, and he's investigating what happened on this night where all these soldiers were waiting out, and they lost their uh, sergeant, and they want to know why the sergeant died. And he starts, like, in, kind of interrogating all these other soldiers. And they all have, like, different stories. And he doesn't know what the real and true story was. And Meg Ryan played the sergeant. Matt Damon plays one of the soldiers who has, like, a drug addiction. And, yeah, again, Denzel's the lead. And it's a really fucking good movie. It's a great movie about how people twist stories around. And there's a lot about even, like, sexism in the army. There's a lot about fear and about war and about honor and stuff. And... Denzel Washington's character arc is incredible. This movie is fantastic. The writing is just top notch. And the fact that nobody talks about it and people just call it like this forgettable war film. No. People need to watch this movie more. Next is shockingly a film that audiences don't like, but I really enjoy. And that's Married to the Mob. Married to the Mob is with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. And, again, it's only about her. She's married to a mobster. Then she has to go into hiding and has to start her new life in, like, witness protection and stuff. And she falls in love with the, the police officer that's protecting her. It's a corny, cheesy, romantic comedy, but I really enjoy it. I think it's enjoyable. I think it's endearing. I love Michelle Pfeiffer in it. I like the comedy. I like this movie. I think it's, like, this 80s rom-com shtick that I just like. So, yeah. Next is the uh, the Blair Witch Project. This, yeah, I know. I know a lot of audiences hate this movie. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I think uh, it's a great found footage film. I think what it did and how the story is laid out and how it was just such a low-budget film was fantastic. I think the marketing is one of the most brilliant pieces of marketing for any film ever made. The fact that they marketed it almost as a real film which made people more scared and made people more talking about the film. I think the marketing for this film is one of the most genius ways to market a film. And I think it's brilliant. I think the movie's fantastic. I don't even think the acting is all that great, but the way the movie's made and the way the idea of it is fantastic. And some of the theories about it is brilliant. And, like, I, I, I think it's a brilliant film. I don't think they should have made sequels to it or remakes or video games. No, they should have just been one standalone film. And as a standalone horror film, it, it works. It's got great atmosphere, it's got genuine tension, and it has great ideas in it. And it, it allows you to theorize of what's happening and what's going on in the film. And just, I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great piece of cinema. Some people f think it's one of the worst films ever. That's fine. I think it's great. Next is Babe. Babe. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Babe is a great fucking movie. Uh, I don't know why people don't... Some audiences don't like it. I guess they don't think a talking pig movie is interesting. I fucking think this movie's great. I think it's endearing. I think it's... I love the story about this, like, pig, and... he like it, it, Yes, it's like a talking animal movie, but the people don't know the animals are talking. But it's about this pig. He's raised by, raised by these dogs, and they... Eventually, like, maybe want to eat the pig, but then they realize the pig can be like a dog and, like, hurdle sheep with the dogs and stuff. And it's great. I, I, I think this movie is adorable. I, I even love this movie as a kid. I had the VHS tape of this movie. I always enjoyed it. I think it's cute. I think it's got a great story. I love the voice acting. I love uh, James Carmel in the movie as the farmer. I think it's great. I even like the, the sequel 
Babe, uh, Pig in the City. I think it's a great movie too. I like the Babe movies, and I love that George Miller made these movies. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a, I'm a Babe fan. I like these movies. And lastly, is Romancing the Stone. Romancing the Stone is super well received critically, and even audience wise, it's like sixty nine percent. I still think that's ridiculous. I, a sixty nine percent audience score. This movie should be like a ninety five. This is one of my favorite films of all time. As you can see, I have uh, Romancing the Stone right up there. I think I, th I think this movie's fucking brilliant. Uh, I think I I'm a Zemeckis fan, as you can clearly tell. Back to the Future, um, Romancing the Stone, or some like my favorite films of all time. So huge Zemeckis fan. Romancing the Stone is incredible, though. Michael Douglas and uh, Kathleen Turner are amazing in the film. It's very Indiana Jones esque, but it's also just a great treasure hunting story with amazing comedy, great action. Danny DeVito is a great side character. I, I love this movie. About once a year, I watch this movie, and it always brings a smile to my face. And just, I'm just baffled this movie isn't just like praised by audiences everywhere. But no, they just think it's, it's fine. No, it's amazing. It's romancing the fucking stone. <laughs> so yeah, those are twenty films uh, audiences got wrong. But in the comment section, please tell me what are some films in your guys' opinion you think audiences got wrong. Let me know in the comments below. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if I like this video, please subscribe to the channel and join the dark side.